All right, virtual convention goers. This is the California National Party 2022 convention, part two. Brought to you on Red Star Reports YouTube channel. Hey, do us all a favor, hit that subscribe button. Because if you hit that button, more people can actually watch this convention live. So why not? Thank you. Red Star Rebels, they will be starting in about three minutes. See you then. So the next person to be speaking will be Theo Slater. Theo has been around since the beginning of the California National Party, and the party is proposing a new office for Theo to actually go out and use, and he'll explain that a little bit more. So please welcome Theo Slater. So the new office is the um, external communications coordinator. That's going to be advocacy at the Capitol. That's going to be legacy, so um, interfacing with um, reporters, helping to get articles out that are favorable to us, maintaining relationships with reporters, and then um, social media is the other big there. So that's all our social media stuff. That's Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, and whatever other areas we delve into further. Um, we've got a little bit on TikTok, more there. Um, and I'll talk about each of these again. So first, 
say a little about, about myself. So in 2015, uh, me and, I don't know, a handful of California patriots created the California National Party. And the reason we did that is that California needs solutions that don't come from the far side of a continent, that don't come from people who don't share our open and inclusive culture, our open inclusive values. We needed a party for California. So that's why we created the California National Party. And um, I am thrilled with how much we've accomplished and how far we've gone. If you look at how many political parties survive five years, uh, it's a very small percentage. And we're on year seven now, and that's surviving COVID, that's surviving. And, and some of our highest achievements have happened most recently. Uh, we were able to uh, endorse two candidates in Long Beach. That's the most candidates we've ever endorsed at once. We ran a candidate for governor. Um, we've got 26,000 votes. Um, so, you know, we're really moving things forward. And I, as external communication coordinator, should you choose to vote for me, um, I want to push things further. So at the Capitol, I am able to meet with assembly members, senators from any party, and advocate for the bills that are coming through the process that uh, strengthen California. I really think of it as building an ever stronger California. For me, there's no like moment of, you know, oh, now we're independent before we were subservient. It's a process, right? So every day I want California to be bigger and stronger and louder than the day before. And that's my goal with the external communications uh, co coordinator role is to help build that ever stronger and more independent California. Um, so that's really where I'm going to go there. In terms of myself, um, I uh, am an entrepreneur. I run a um, small law firm called Slater Law. And I think that that experience of being an entrepreneur has informed my party building, has helped me uh, contribute along with everyone else who's done so much for the California National Party. Um, and, and move us all in the direction of a stronger and ever more independent California. Because what we really need is a California that works for everyone. Right now, we're in a situation where only the top, what, 5%, 1% are comfortable in our great California nation. And we need to build a California nation where 100% of the people are comfortable. And that means housing for all. And that's a housing first approach to homelessness. Our politicians in DC or in Sacramento now want to pretend like how to get thousands of people off the street is some mystical process that's just too hard for them to figure out. That's ridiculous. The way to solve housing problems is to have more housing and then to give it to people who can't afford housing. That's how you solve housing problems. It's just, it's not, it's not a hard process. And if the market is failing us, which it has failed us for decades, then we'll build it ourselves. As uh, Governor Brown once said, no, we'll launch our own damn satellites. Well, we'll build our own damn housing. Like, we don't have to wait for the market. We can, we can do this ourselves. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. And as Germany has some problems uh, that are foreseeable, we may become the fourth largest economy in the world. And that means that 40 million Californians are producing more in culture, in uh, manufactured goods and services than any country in the world, except for the United States, China, Japan, and right now Germany. And we're, there's only 40 million of us. And, and that is raw production. So we are the most dynamic society on earth. We're one of the most diverse societies on earth. And we're ruled by these you know, incredibly old, extremely white people in DC who uh, you know, have no idea what our culture is, have, have no idea what our needs are, aren't doing anything to help us. They, they try to tell us who can be American. So, so that means they, they can tell us who can be Californian. So we have ICE invading our communities, taking people who we love and care about, ripping them out of their family's arms, and throwing them in some place far away that maybe they haven't lived in for decades. It's ridiculous. Our situation is absurd. And the, the era of us living under the boot of DC needs to be ended as quickly as possible. Because DC is just getting worse, all right? The government in DC, the federal government, is just getting more fascist every election. 
And there's nobody, if the only people standing between you and Democrat, I'm sorry, if the only people standing between you and fascists is Democrats, nobody's standing between you and fascists. Because Democrats can barely uh, handle getting through complete speeches. They can barely handle winning elections against a very le weak opposition. They're not going to defeat fascists. And also, we as a community have to do way more. Because you can't vote out fascism. All right, it's way too entrenched in D.C. So the way to protect our communities from these rampaging ICE agents, from these entrenched fascists that occupy all the red states, is to create a strong and independent California republic. And that's what we are here to do. Um, but in addition to that, we're also looking at doing Medi-Cal for all. So that would give everyone health care. Because let's face it, the health insurance scam takes our money and then they just deny us care. If I had the money that I've wasted on health insurance, I could pr afford a massive amount of health care. But it's all sucked away from me, and I have to do that because these feds in D.C. have created this racket where you know, this health insurance industry uh, kills us as expensively as possible for the profit of the ruling class. And again, that only helps you know, 1 to 5% of the population. We need a California that works for 100% of the population. Uh, another approach for that is universal basic income. So that would be you know, getting rid of all this means testing, all this bureaucracy, all the shame about getting help from a, a social program, and just giving everyone enough so that we can put a floor on poverty. So that we can say as a community, no one will live below this level. We're going to, we're put, we're going to put a floor on poverty that allows everyone to have housing, that allows everyone to have food and clothing and shelter and health care. And we can just create that ourselves. We don't need DC for that. Like I said, we're the most dynamic society in the entire world. And if we could just stand up and stand up for ourselves and do that for ourselves, we can create a better society, much better than America. It's an incredibly low bar to be better than America. And while California is inventing the future, America is mired in the past, right? They want to say that half the population can have all the rights of a baby incubator, all right? Californians deserve better, right? We will protect abortion forever. We will protect the rights of the LGBTQ community forever. There are in, in Texas right now, they are hunting trans kids, and they're pulling them away from their families, and they're destroying their families, and sometimes they're even arresting the parents, like we need to create an oasis for free people who can flee here from all of the occupied fascist red states and they will build our ever more dynamic and incredible society. California is great because we reflect the entire population of the world. There are people, what does a, California, a Californian look like? A Californian looks like every single kind of person who lives on this earth because all of those people are here and we're a community of every kind of person. And that's what we need to continue to build, and that's what we need to continue to strengthen. So as we watch America go backwards, we need to step forward. We need to protect the rights of everyone. We need to create an ever stronger anti-racist society that is against every form of bigotry, that is against every form of hatred, a free society. When the Americans talked about their project, they talked about the virtues of freedom. But they have utterly failed to deliver those virtues to the vast majority of the population. In America, you are only as free as the numbers in your bank account. All right? We want to create a society that is actually free for everyone. A society that will not question who you love. A society who will not question um, you know, how you live your life as long as you're not harming others. And that's something the Americans have failed at, but it's something we're going to succeed at. We're going to build a better society, a freer society, a society where everyone in the LGBTQ community feels safe, a society where everyone of every race, of every language, of every community feels safe and included and a full citizen in our society. And that will never be true in America. All right, They've had hundreds of years to not be the terrible disaster that they are, and they've utterly failed. But we'll succeed, because we're the most dynamic society on Earth. So please uh, vote for me for External Communications Coordinator and uh, for California. Again, notes
very good speech from Theo Slater, and we also hope that you vote for him for external communications coordinator. Uh, next up is going to be Bill Scott. Bill is our NorCal chapter coordinator currently, and also is running for re-election. And Bill is going to talk about his position, but also has some interesting information to share, which I think is of value. So here comes Bill. I must apologize for my appearance. Um, when you're traveling somewhere and your wife says, do you have the bag? Make sure there is more, uh, there's only one bag. Uh, so alas, all my dress clothes and many things are still back in Fairfield, California. I am Bill Skog. I teach kids how to play chess and I dabble in the stock markets. And I am running again for re-election of NorCal uh, Regional Coordinator. Um, that is my technical job, but my real job in this party is to dumb down all the things you brilliant people say. Um, there was a lot of talk about like the two parties today. I think I've got a good analogy for it. The two parties are Walmart and Target. One party or one company is all about God, guns, and family. The other company is there to convince poor to lower middle class people that they're sophisticated in upper, upper middle class. That is the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Both of them kill small businesses, just like the Democrats and the Republicans. Both parties, just like both companies, care more about their shareholders than their employees, just like the Democrats and Republicans. And if you go to a Target and Walmart and you're a minority, chances are you're gonna be followed around, just like you will be in America. In California, we have a solution that we are trying to push for this, and that is ranked choice voting. There are Democrats who are saying that minorities and people in general are too stupid to understand ranked choice voting, which to me is, of course, racist. And, but not only that, it's ridiculous. We are a country where every person has a top five list of their favorite bands, their favorite restaurants, their favorite movies. We are a nation of rankers. Um, we should be doing ranked choice voting. It's the only way that we can break out of shopping at Target and Walmart. We had co-op talk today. The California National Party wants to be your co-op. We want to get all the groups, all these third parties that share the common goals, that want to not shop at Walmart and Target. And that's what we gotta do, we gotta get this, the California party needs to be a big tent where we can get all the third parties together and try to break up this, uh, um, pardon my French, clusterfuck, which is uh, American politics. When you look at California, you can't blame Walmart. You can only blame Target. The Democrats, have, as many of us have said today, hold a super majority. We couldn't even get a vote on the floor for Medi-Cal for all. Couldn't even get it on the floor. And we have a super majority. It's, it's madness. You look at our, as Theo was talking about our homeless situation. No one is standing in the way of the Democrats from solving it. They're just sitting there and doing nothing. Um, and I actually think it's worse for rural California than it is for us on the coast. To those who are in the, the state of Jefferson, people who are so fed up with the, you know, the Democratic Party in inland California, I get it. And you are 100% justified in being angry at the Democratic Party. 100%. In rural California, they get their resources taken. They get their water taken. Water, the essential to life. Water gets taken from rural California and is given to the coast, and nothing is given back in return other than contempt. You are rural, you are trash, you are beneath us. That's what rural California gets from California, from the coast, and that's why they're angry and they are completely justified in it. What we need to do to solve that is first, coastal California needs to take care of their own water supply. It's a foundation of a thing called bioregionalism, but it's, it's essential. We need to create a massive jobs program to create water desalination plants 
all along our coast. It is not fair that the cities in California take from rural California and give nothing in return. So not only do we have to make our own water on the coast, but we also have to take the bounty that Silicon Valley, that LA has taken for decades. The wealthiest place in the world are basically San Francisco and LA. We need to take that wealth, tax it, and give it back to rural California in, a, in the form of a universal basic income and a negative income tax. You look at a place like Humboldt County, a place where we told you to stop cutting down the trees, which I'm totally grateful for. I love Humboldt County. I love visiting. But we gave them no other job. So Californians were like, being the, the pioneers we are, started growing pot. And California, we kind of gave them permission with the medical licenses. But as soon as the federal government ever wanted to come and roll in, California state government would just sit there and be like, nothing we can do about it. So you look at these rural areas. They have been screwed over. You take a place like Humboldt County, where the average salary is $19,000 a year. You can't survive off of that. You implement the California National Party's UBI and negative income tax, that average person in Humboldt County went from $19,000 to $31,000 a year. That is not only life changing for that person, but that is community changing. That's, that is every small town getting five new businesses popping up. That, that's the vision that we need to be. You know, the idea of, of turning all these small towns into like thriving places for businesses, for entrepreneurs. And like I said, we can do that with our policies, especially UBI and a negative income tax. Um, I now want to talk about one more thing about rural California. And I think this is one of the cool things about our party. We're one of the only progressive parties that will outright say, hey, this tax sucks. And you look at the gas tax, it punishes rural Californians who can barely afford to live there. And then they have to pay outrageous gas taxes. We all would prefer mass transit. And especially we want to push mass transit in, in urban areas. But it is not, uh, it's not fair to punish rural Californians for their way of life. So one of the things like I said I love about our party is that we were brave enough as a progressive group to say, this tax is wrong. So that, like I said, that's one of the things that drew me to the party. When I look at the nation's problems, and in comparative to California, and I think people always go to the donor state. You have heard that. For every dollar we give, they take a cent back. We only get 99 cents back. <clears throat> and we often complain about like states like Kentucky. I get it, because they're the ones who hate us. And you know, they, they, um, for every dollar, they get $2 back. And we should be outraged about that, right? There is a group that does even better than Kentucky. And those are lobbyists. For every dollar a company spends on lobbying, they receive $220 back from the government. They are Kentucky on steroids. Um, <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Um, I, I mentioned that I trade, I dabble, I, I teach chess, and I take all that money I get from teaching in a nonprofit, and I put it in the stock market. And I, as smart as I feel that I am, I do not follow my own trading rules. I don't even follow Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is shit compared to some of the best traders in the country. And those traders are in Congress. Nancy Pelosi consistently beats every market, crushes it. Um, there's a great, your great congressman here, Forbes, the great Alan Lowenthal. I put quotations for great because he's not great. Um, yeah, you could make a career just investing in what Alan Lowenthal does. You can make your career. Um, I'll tell you another funny one along those lines. There are people who have trading systems where they just do the opposite of Jim, Jim Cramer from Mad Money. The guy, they always come out, oh, there's an economic issue. What's going on in the markets? Let's ask Jim Cramer. That dude loses 10% every year on his trades. So that is the financial wisdom you're getting. So uh, I guess I can say I'm proud or not too proud, but I basically trade off of what corrupt Congress people do. I go online, I see which companies have lobbied Washington. I look at corporate flights. I see which companies have been flying to Washington. I look to see what Congress people are trading, and I trade it. And I'm going to give you, um, to put it in perspective, I do about 5% a week on my stocks. 
I gain 5% steady eddy. There are some firms that like do that in a year. I just, 5% just steady every week. And I'm gonna tell you about some of the trades I'm doing right now, because I think this will anger you, I hope. Um, there is a congressman in Buffalo, Chris Jacobs, he is a Republican. And he was being investigated for insider trading, along with a couple of other congressmen who I, I tend to follow. I think they're very, very good traders. <laughs> But he was being investigated for insider trading. The mass shooting happens in Buffalo. He decides all of a sudden as a Republican, you know what? It is time that we have sensible gun reform. He's called a rhino, a Republican in name only. You can't run again. But coincidentally enough, the Department of Justice couldn't quite convict him on that insider trading. So, now Christopher Jacobs has been looting, <laughs> he's been looting the, the candy shop. All of his trades now have been in biotech companies where he's on the committee, making the laws and passing it through. So I have literally just followed this guy's inside trading. And this is all public information, which is shocking. I'm not breaking any laws. You guys can all get this information too and do the same thing. But that's how corrupt our government is. <laughs> It's just, it's brazen, the amount of bribery and um, corruption. And when I talked about, you know, the duopoly, I talked about the solution being ranked choice voting. When I talk about the Democrat supermajority and how it's hurting California, I talk about Medi-Cal for all. I talk about UBI, uni um, affordable housing, water desalination. But when you talk about the American problem for California, there is only one solution. And it's the solution that we have all come to. It's the thing that everyone wants to say, but they're too afraid to say. Enough of California being in this shit of a union. It is time for California to thrive and be its own nation. So in conclusion, free the bear. Thank you. Bill there, but we do have a video segment uh, that we actually, me, myself, uh, and Bill, me, myself, and Bill, me and Bill actually did uh, with Irving Welsh. Now, if you don't know that name off the bat, Irving Welsh is actually the author of Train Spot, and uh, he is a very much a supporter of California being independent, and he's very much a supporter of the Scottish National Party working towards independence in Scotland. So, we're going to just watch that clip and uh, Hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Thank you once again to Mr. Irvine Welsh. Um, dare I say my generation, one of my generation's most talented authors and voices of my generation. Um, thank you very much for joining the uh, CNP convention. Um, how are things going today? Uh, not bad at all, yeah. Um, just really, really sort of busy kind of working on a new show that uh, we start shooting next month, the end of August. So we've got the production office going now and we're just running around looking at locations and um, recruiting actors and uh, just really working on the scripts to try and get them as sharp as we can before we shoot. Well, congratulations. That uh, I know I will be looking forward to that for sure. Not only because I'm a fan of yours, but because you do support the California independence movement, which is really what it's all about today. So. I guess my first question for you, since the last time we've talked, Joe Biden has been stumbling his way through the presidency. If nothing dramatically changes in America, where do you see the United States in 20 to 30 years? Oh, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult because, um, you know, there seems to be a, a consensus that um, we're, you know, we've, we've, been, we've kind of set up these, um, these old kind of imperialistic nation states to really just siphon all the wealth into you know, towards a very, very small number of people. And it's almost like, um, you know, the, the, the dispute that um, the people in these elites have with themselves is like, you know, do we do, is it most effective to do this kind of um, as a global concern? Is it most effective to play a nationalist card when we do this? How, how do we, we do this? Um, do we try to, preserve capitalism with some kind of form of social democracy, they would try and redesign it with kind of um, 
grandiose kind of great resets, um, or do we just like some of the older ones? You know, just do we just keep our snouts in the trough and just you know, and hope that everything stays the same and we can kind of continue in this way until the whole system kind of grinds to a halt. But we'll be gone by this time or whatever. So I think there is a there is a kind of existential crisis amongst power as well because the whole the 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 systems that the kind of the the nation states, the traditional nation states that they've used to um, to maintain power and influence, seem to be fracturing now. There seems to be in this. Um, there seems to be a, a, a general kind of um, consensus that um, everything is kind of sort of going. You know, it's not like um, you had uh, in America. You had the sort of um, you've had the kind of neoliberal Democrat kind of sort of um, Biden approach. You've had the sort of um, the the same kind of machine being serviced by Trump and the nationalists, and very much the same in Britain with the kind of Brexit, Johnson, um, the kind you know. If you look what Starmer is doing, he's, he's saying we're not going to renationalise railways, we're not going to renationalise um, any of the, the utilities in the UK. We're going to keep things as they are. And so the, the, this idea that we can't. Um, attack this failed consensus in any way. It's like the the state kind of has painted itself into a corner whereby there, there is no um, there's no room for manoeuvre. There is not there's nothing that can um, can be done to stop this machine from kind of grinding on and kind and wrecking everything in its path, you know, including them eventually too. So this is a it's a it's a very, very difficult time for the world. It's a very, very difficult time um, for countries and for you know for nation states for any political entity, uh, because it's become so divorced from the needs of its populace. It's so I mean it's like when you look at um, uh, America after the war, Britain after the war, there was this notional idea that even if it was a bit elitist and it did serve kind of um, wealth and power uh, primarily, there was the idea that you had to be you had to look after people, you had to look after your citizens, um, and you know the, the idea that you would have uh, full employment, kind of economic opportunities for advancement and for setting up uh, businesses. You would have a responsibility for education. You would have responsibility for healthcare to some extent. Um, more in Britain than America, uh, you know. So the, the the state did meet the people in at least some kind of a, a benign role. Now the state meets the people primarily as a sort of. Um, it's an oppressive instrument that says, don't do this, don't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. We're going to tax you, we're going to take everything from you, we're going to redistribute your wealth, we're going to take all your assets. Um, so it's not really offering um, the citizen anything but increasing oppression. And this is happening right across the board. It's like uh, when you see the pressures on these states to deliver, um, they get to that point, well, we can only really deliver for the very, very wealthiest people who have any, any, anything anyway, you know. Um, and the more enlightened of them would probably like to stop this, would like to reverse this to some extent, to keep this going, but they can't. The machine that they've created um, is just too too big and powerful now. And that seems to be uh, the way things are going. And it's like the the time frame of this is the thing that we can dispute, you know, and, and talk about it because uh, it seems to be happening. Um, it, it, it used to be used to have a sense that this happened very, very slowly, but now the, the, the sense that it's, it's happening exponentially and it could actually, you know, it could be something that could be five years down the line, it could actually be tomorrow, people could be out in the streets, you, you just never know at this point in time. You know, um, I, when I look at capitalism, I think that capitalism could have got away with it if you provided all those safety nets. If, you, if everyone had free education, you had free health care, and you know you're gonna have a roof over your head. I think most people would have been content with that, but what you have now, I think it was Brett Weinstein, the guy said that people who supported capitalism did not realize the technology, its son would come and eat it. You have so much like technology and just AI and automation coming that all the power is gonna be in maybe six or seven people's hands. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's like, you know, it has, capitalism has created its own Kind of global politburo, centralized power, centralized in a way that kind of um, the you know the the kind of Stalinists in the Soviet Union only really dreamed of you know to have that kind of because it has it has happened with the, with the epoch of technology. So it's I mean it's it's miles away uh, from from a 
free market society. It's like the the, the, the current capitalism is anti-free market because it's it's you know it's about economies of scale. It's about lobby systems, power and concentration of power and wealth into fewer and fewer and fewer hands. It's basically about scamming kind of the, the citizens with um, manipulating numbers and financial data and creating fiat currency. Uh, to buy out their resources and then to sort of do, and then to decimate to put them into this position of kind of complete and utter servitude. So we're in the we're, we're in this really interesting but really kind of scary point in history now that um, and the whole um, the whole kind of response to this seems to be some form of techno feudalism where we kind of um, we 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 iconize and worship these kind of sort of. Um, billionaires, these tech billionaires who are supposed to be these great visionaries that are going to save the world and run the world for us and tell us what to do and what to think, you know, and uh, so we wait on the, we wait on these guys and kind of, you know, when I mean, you look at um, the actual bullshit, uh, the, the, the simplistic nonsense that they come out with, um, it's really, it's the ultimate worship of false gods because uh, nobody seems to have the, um, you know, the, the if, if you're going to have an autocracy, you can at least have a an enlightened and interesting and sort of bright autocracy. We've got into this position whereby we've created a really stupid economic system is benefiting really stupid people and it's stupefying them as much as it's stupefying the, 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 the population in general. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a big, big, big um, turning point for us, I think, uh, right now. And I mean, again, you know, the reason that I support um, sort of independence parties within these nation states is because I think the solution has to be local. It has to be about people taking power in their own communities. It has to be about people saying, you know, you're not there to feed us, you're not there to clothe us, you're not there to can transport us, you're not there to sort of, um, to, you know, you're not there to give us educational opportunities, you're not there to give us, um, to give us cultural opportunities, working opportunities. Fair enough we'll do it ourselves, you know, so that we, we get back to that sort of, um, I think, you know, the, you'll see a, a sort of, um, a lot of the ideas in the 60s that kind of, that, that were utopianist, um, now seem very pragmatic. They seem actually pragmatic solutions that are, that are kind of being offered up to the um, the ongoing crisis of that we're facing. And it is an ongoing crisis. I mean, it's like people on the left have used the term the crisis of capitalism for ages is almost like so sort of, seems very hackneyed and uh, you know flat now but there is a massive cost of living crisis in the west and particularly britain and america with you know energy prices uh the, you know the, the the climate change just the general cost of living things have just suddenly suddenly twice the price they were pre-covid there's something really kind of fucked up about this like you know and i think everybody is feeling that and realizing that and recognizing Absolutely true. I mean, it's just a, again, it's a, a crisis that is continuing and will get worse, it seems. Hopefully, California can break out of this system. Um, one of the questions I have for you is that if California did, uh, say, tomorrow become independent, what would you, as an outside person, what would you like to see California do that, Cal that Americans have never done before? What do you think that California should embrace that America has completely steered away from over the last, like, decades? Well, the first one would be a responsibility to, to the citizens, you know, it would be kind of um, responsibility that, you know, you're all Californians, you're all going to be looked after, you're all going to contribute, and you've got certain things that you have to protect. And it kind of, you know, I, I think that um, a whole reworking of um, a Bill of Citizens' Rights, which isn't based on some kind, isn't based on kind of a feudalistic, imperialistic kind of warfare culture, which the American Constitution was with people coming from Europe. And so, you know, so, something that's much more about people and the, their relationship with the, the communities that they're in. Um, I see it as also, because California is, is, still, is a massive place, basically. And I see it also about kind of, um, Kind of devolution of power to to local autonomous uh, regions within the within the um, the state, you know, and uh, particularly like you know you don't want um, you don't want people in LA making decisions for San Francisco or or, or San Diego. You, know? you want you want as much much um, sort of uh, devolved power as possible and as much power within the communities as possible. And I see it um, reacting against that kind that centralist tendency. 
I mean, I would, I would love to see a state like California and a state like Scotland, for example, do away with elections completely and have a lottery so that everybody would be forced to participate in democracy. So you'd pick your, you'd pick your MPs or your senators or your representatives from, from a, a statewide ballot, and everybody would have to take part. Everybody would, um, but everybody would be educated in civics and science and all the things that we need, you know, to, to operate as a community. Um, and we'd have a, we'd have a, we'd have a sort of. Um, design a, a kind of uh, a government that's fit for the challenges, for the purpose of challenging uh, all the, the, the things that we, the issues that we face in the modern world, like kind of uh, population, climate change, all these kind of things, and the, you know, economic sort of, um, you know, using economic resources to benefit the community rather than just siphoning them off to, to, to private ownership for people in transnational community. People don't need to own sort of massive amounts of land and property. It's just, it's just absolute nonsense. So let's get the, the resources of the state working for the people of the state, and let's get the people of the state kind of educated and 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 um, culturally and, and socially aware and, and, and contributing to the, the welfare of the, the state. And I think that's the that's the way forward. You know, something that's orientated not around business, not around um, not around some kind of notion of. Um, or, you know, or not even old sort of socialistic kind of notions, but just really rooted in people as they are and what they're actually doing. And, um, and you know, in this um, kind of post-industrial era that we're heading into, and we, we don't really know how to monetize, but let's see how, you know, we can, we can contribute, how people can really contribute and how people can be looked after when they contribute. I, Absolutely. Something you said that I, I think scares me and it brings me to another point about Americans being more civic minded. You ask any Republican right now, they will tell you Joe Biden is a Marxist, socialist, communist. And I, I'm trying to explain to them, they're like, those are three different things and Joe Biden is none of them. Um, what excites me about talking to you, Irvine, is you and I agree that being left doesn't mean you have to be socialist, big government. Um, I was trying to explain to my dad the other day that communism, in theory, is small government. It's communes that, you know, communism in America was Native American tribes. Um, you know, it's it's communes where hippies work together. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think originally, I mean, if um, if you you look at Marx's writings originally, he kind of he did he envisaged a kind of um, moving towards anarchism. He envisaged the, the withering away of the state. He never got that far in his life with his writings and his work, but he did see the kind of um, he did see revolution as a sort of transformative thing. As a, you know, I mean, obviously it's like um, all that's kind of not happened. You know, it's it's, it's not the the, um, the things have changed. I mean, the, the the social democratic kind of sort of state, ironically, kind of um, killed revolutionary fervor because it you know it it put. Um, it put a mixed economy capitalism in the position of being able to deliver for working people. Um, that doesn't happen now because of the way that capitalism has changed with technology as we've talked about. But um, I think that um, we, you know, that the, the, uh, the, now it's not, you know, the, the proletariat bourgeoisie polarization, it's a post-industrial polarization. It's much, much stronger than Marx himself would have envisaged. It's like kind of much more dramatic. It's between basically the citizens and the the elites, you know, and you can call them whatever you like, the one percent and all that. But it's also like um, there's a technological imperative that stands above these elites that are actually is actually in control of the process. It's like you know the capital has become this kind of almost like a kind of a a, a sort of um, a quasi god. You know, it's like it's, it's a, a god without consciousness, and everything is sucked into this black hole that is created. And all the vain glorious people who've been brought up in this narcissistic culture that we've developed to facilitate this uh, are deluded enough to think they might be in control of it. You know, all the kind of Bill Gates and Elon Musk's and all that, you know, they're in control of jack shit. Biden's in control of jack shit. Trump is in control of jack shit. The reactive guys trying to sort of um, piece together something that they think is going to maintain the status quo of this current status quo of exploitation. Well, yeah, I mean, that's you're articulating our position better than we do ourselves. So again, thank you, because there's a lot here that is 
immensely interesting. And again, um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say else than that. Um, kind of as a way to wrap up, uh, this is kind of a fun thing. Let's just say the uh, government of Scotland gives you a ambassadorship and you're the ambassador to California. <laughs> what would you like? For some, you know, ambassadors are kind of tossed out left and right. Um, but, um, where would you like to live? What, what part of California have you been to and had interest in? Or, you know, I know you spent some time in LA, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I've spent a lot of working time in LA. I actually lived in San Francisco for a year um, and I've, I've kind of been going out there quite a lot. So San Francisco and LA are the places that I'm kind of, um, you know, it's a bit of a boring thing to say, like California, San Francisco and LA, you know, it's a massive diverse state, but these are the two, you know, the, these are the two uh, places in, in California I'm most familiar with. I'm going to throw out a suggestion. Next time you come, if you've never been Humboldt County and the giant redwood trees is life changing. Brilliant, but I'll get up there for sure, Luke, yeah. Excellent, thank you so much for your time. And um, yeah, let us know about your upcoming projects and we'll make sure to uh, spread the word and I'll I'll double order whatever you're selling. Brilliant, <laughs> thank you so much guys. And um, good luck and keep up the good fight because uh, you know, it's like, it's, you know, one of the things that's interested me, I've been working on this thing about uh, this TV series about the fall of the Berlin, uh, the fall of the Berlin Mall, the collapse of communism. And nobody saw that happening, you know, right up because people, you know, people said, you know, the Western propaganda was it's doomed, it's doomed, it's doomed, and everybody just gonna, yeah, but, you know, people believed it was gonna be there forever, and when it went, it went so quickly, you know, and nobody prophesized it, nobody said that this was gonna happen, and it just took everybody by surprise, and I think that um, I really feel that this is a similar kind of time for for Western corporate capitalism. I think it's like um, it feels very tawdry and patched up and struggling, you know, the financial system struggling. It's not, there's never been a, a fiat currency that survived. And I don't, you know, I don't think um, our ones are going to do it. It's just, um, it's, a, it's a mess and it's a scam. And really, people who are, are looting, they're trying to get as much as they can out of it before the whole place goes up in flames. So um, that kind of, so, I mean, you guys keep up the good fight. And, you know, it's like, um, you'll get traction. I really believe you will get uh, traction and support. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take it easy. Take care, guys. Thanks again. Right. Thanks again. Really appreciate it. Have a nice evening. So we are transitioning to the end of our convention. Um, I did write out a speech. Um, I did write a lot. Uh, I'm not very much a natural speaker. It doesn't come naturally to me. I'd rather be at home writing like Britain Welsh. And I just want to say, first off, thank you all for coming again. It's appreciated that you took the time. I know a lot of you came uh, far distances to actually be here. And on a personal level, I just can't thank anyone enough for coming out and helping out with our party here. Again, this is a small startup party. This is a party of working families, of small business owners, of people who believe in a different form of economics and politics. This event space we rented, I'm pretty sure this is cheaper than anything Newsom spends at a dinner or Nancy Pelosi spends at BevMo. We are a party that is held together by conviction rather than any personal social climbing or attempted profit. And we should be very, very proud, and I am proud of this party. I just want to say that, again, I am going to be chair of this party, do the best job I possibly can. Um, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I'm supported by amazing speakers, amazing individuals who are standing up in what is a very much a dark time, really. Uh, when every street corner in every major city of California is bursting with the homeless, when people are afraid to go to a doctor because they don't want their family to go broke because they're sick, when it seems like almost everyone is on the edge of down because they're living paycheck to paycheck, uh, I just couldn't sit at home. And I know the rest of you couldn't do that. You came out, you stood up, and you came to this convention to say that this is all wrong, that everything that is happening right now in this country, it's going very wrong. The system is wrong. The system is ugly. 
and it's time for some real change. And I think we can gather people of different backgrounds or even different ideologies to come forward and attempt something better and new. And I think we can do it here in California. Now, our party has a platform online. Our platform is based on the consensus of our activists and the consensus of our leadership committee. This platform, I believe, and we all believe, is the best solution to what is happening in our community of California. It is not perfect, it is not a cure-all, but it is something where we have all said that this is probably the best bet to have some kind of living here in California. We can't America. America, that dream is no longer. It might have been alive to begin with, but it is not happening, and we all know it. Especially when our government is still dithering and trying to figure out about a coup attempt which was going to destroy democracy on January 6th. They're still trying to figure out what happened there. And that is our beer hall push moment. And afterwards, we all know, if you know history, where the trajectory is. If you do not punish people who attempt to usurp democracy. So, that being said, we need to have a new republic here in California. And the California National Party, which proposes that, has a platform that you can vote on or you can uh, vote against that will be online. Uh, we have a key program. The program is, number one, housing will be acknowledged as a civil right and incorporated into the California Constitution. We will have true tax reform. If you make less, you're taxed less. If you make more, you're taxed more than after a certain point. Universal basic income and negative income tax will be put into place to help workers and their families. The poor shouldn't be burdened by taxation, which makes them want to leave our state. Political decentralization, point four. Once we have independence, or even if we come to power in Sacramento before independence, we are going to push to have a radical decentralization of this entire state. But what we mean by that is that from gun control to economic development to gas taxes, local communities across California should be in the driver's seat. California is radically diverse ethnically, politically, geographically, and economically, and there is no single blueprint for success. By embracing this diversity and empowering local communities, create a more robust and dynamic economy for all Californians. Point five, a public bank. No more domination by Wells Fargo and the Bank of the Americas. We will have a bank that invests in our community and not steal from our community. Number six, paying educators more and supporting them. If education is important, we don't, why don't we have the best in our schools and why are we not paying for the best? We need to invest in our teachers first and foremost. Number seven, we will restore our fisheries, our forests, and we'll fight climate change. We will make our California carbon neutral. Number eight, we will end PG&E and SoCal Edison. We will end those monopolies. The state will take over those monopolies at the beginning, but it will be decentralized once again and put it into at the county level. We will have a Green New Deal. Number nine, we will build up desalinization and generate more fresh water for our farms. We will no longer ignore the needs of our farmers in California, and we will no longer pretend that our food supply will always be there. We need to do something. Number 10, we will create a humane immigration system, whatever the US government says. It isn't a crime to have a better life for yourself and your family. Number 11, we will invest and restore native communities. We will transfer federal lands back to the indigenous. We will, have, we will give back more power to the First Nations. Number 12, we will keep abortion safe and legal in California. Number 13, trans rights are human rights, period. Number 14, we will create and push for more cooperatives to be run by the workers. We will try to transition as many companies as possible to employee ownership in a way so that many workers eventually take eventual control of the companies. We will make it easier for people to form a union, and we will try to make it nearly impossible to force a union, as we see nowadays. We actually were going to have Representative uh, Tyler Keeling from Starbucks United speak 
on the new union movement that is happening across California and the country. Uh, unfortunately, he is not able to make it because the entire staff of his Starbucks was sent home due to a COVID-19 outbreak. So it's unfortunate we don't hear more about that. But again, we do support the new union movement that is happening in Starbucks and across the nation and other walks of life. We will also make sure that we will establish a right to leisure and relaxation so that people are not coming home exhausted and working on holidays constantly. We should adopt European standards when it comes to holidays. We will also guarantee admission to a California State University system if students meet certain requirements, as well as the University of California system, again, if these students meet those requirements. We will expand high-speed rail, public transportation, and make sure they're safe from crime and any other issues and are more like Japan and Europe than they are like Amtrak. We will end the two-party system in California. We will set up a system where more political parties have a chance. We want to see a legislature where Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, Communists, Socialists, Anarchists, whatever, have a chance to be heard. Nobody has a monopoly of political wisdom, and we should be all having some kind of say in our legislature. It should not be dominated by the two parties. We will end police corruption by having a statewide internal affairs bureau with the power to go after bad and dirty cops. We will punish bad cops accordingly. And finally, we will, no matter what, if we were actually put into power, set up a statewide convention about a new California constitution and set up a way so that we can actually have independence from the federal government and break away peacefully from the federal government. America will not save us or fix our issues. Only Californians can save California. So I hope that you vote for our platform and I hope you also vote for me as chair of the California National Party. Thank you so much. And in a second, we're going to put up the link so you can actually do so. So we welcome any comments further, and thank you so much. everyone that's going to be kept up for a few more minutes of course but that concludes our, con our convention and thank you so much just going to explain something real quick here the, uh, there's a little typo on this ballot so there's two secretaries they're not actually both the secretary if you read the uh, descriptions the second secretary is actually the external communications director role that I was talking about earlier and the other thing is um, our after party is going to be at mission control so I hope we can all make it there it's going to be at 3 30 the link of the um, let's see it's to... top left yeah no I can't it's... read it yeah yeah it, just the results for california.com <laughs> Well, yeah, and for people watching, it's uh, lobes4ca.com forward slash lc dash elections dash 2022. So that we're using this website just because we already have it and it was easiest to set up quickly. So once again, that's l o b s f o r c a dot com forward slash lc dash elections dash 2022 and thank you all how long do they have to vote we usually do a week good question it's a very good question and something should have been said better but yes it will be open for a week it'll be a week for the ballot and also the uh um, also, the platform as well will be open for a week. Thank you so much. Oh. Do you support the 32 hour work week? We do, that is in our platform. And the living wage? We do as well. Perfect. Of course, devil's in the details, but yes. Any other questions from the floor? Anything else I can help out with? 
Okay, well, we'll just leave it up there for a while, and uh, thank you all again. go to Mission Control afterwards at 3.30, just right up the street. It's a five-minute walk and even that. And uh, hope to see you all there. We have a little reserve space on the balcony so you can have Well, thank you, Red Star Rebels, for watching. That's been the California National Party Convention uh, 2022. Uh, again, like I said, thank you. Uh, this this uh, this broadcast will be made available within the next 24 hours. It will be back up for everybody to watch from start to finish. And as soon as we're done editing, we will have a formal we'll have a formal release version probably within the next couple of days. Um, thank you everyone for attending. We are Red Star Report. Yeah, no problem, my brother.